when I woke up, I started talking to myself in bed because I was hoping I had a voice. Uh, I, I wasn't so sure I would wake up this morning and be able to have a voice that's clear. It sounds pretty clear. Do I sound pretty clear? Everyone doesn't sound like a frog is in my throat. So uh, starting on Friday, I have and I had a, a great breakfast uh, with a friend. I drank three cups of coffee on Friday morning and then had the brilliant idea of running hills with my oldest son. Right. It's football season. He's trying to be in shape, trying to get in shape, trying to work out. So I said, yeah, let's go run some hills. Right. The way we used to do it. sprint up the hill, jog down or walk down, sprint up the hill. jog. Right. So we go to uh, Kids Castle. Everybody know Kids Castle and that big hill. We're sprinting up the hill. So the first one, I smoked him. I could still smoke him. I beat him. I gave him a head start and everything, Tony, and I still beat him. Right, Zach? Don't feel bad, Zach. You'll get there. You'll get there. Then he beat me on every other hill, right? Because I was so tired. I saw the second hill, he beats me, but I'm jogging. By the fourth hill, I feel this burning in my chest. I start getting cold sweats, and that coffee's coming up on me. I could barely breathe and everything. So I had to sit down, and then I threw up twice, guys. That's how bad, that's how hard I was trying to go, Will. You know, that's how hard I was trying to go. So I throw up twice, get my last hill in, because I was like, I'm doing at least five. So I did get my last hill in, but I walked up that one. But for my pride, I had to get that last hill, DJ. Right? So I do that. Then yesterday was soccer day, right? So Timmy's team is in the playoffs. JD's team is in the playoffs. I'm from New Jersey, and I like to yell, Tony. So I'm coaching Timmy's team, and I'm yelling the whole time, right? The whole time. Then go to JD's game later on, and I'm yelling the whole time on that one. So by last night, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to have a voice. It was all scratchy, messed up, but I drank a lot of water. I did what I was supposed to do. And so I was so grateful to be able to talk this morning because I wasn't sure what was going to happen if I could, right? But life is just crazy and is busy. Who else here is busy all the time, right? It's busy all the time, regardless of the season, whether you're young, right? Some people are like, oh, when you're young, you know, you, you don't have kids. You have plenty of free time. You don't think you have a lot of free time, Daniel Grace? A little bit subjective, right? right? When you're young, I know Brittany and I used to be busy all the time because we would choose to do stuff, right? We would always have something to do. If you have kids, it gets busy. And then some people say in retirement, you have plenty of time, right? Yeah, maybe you have time to choose what you want to do, but you're busy, right? Life is always filled with being busy, right? And that's just our own individual lives, right? The world is crazy and busy all the time, right? We talked a couple of weeks ago, we had a prayer service related to these major events, Hurricane Helene. That is a crazy thing, right? A hectic thing that's happening in the world, right? Please remember to pray for victims. We have Israel Hamas war going on, right? When you look at the things going on across the world, it could be overwhelming, right? There's just so many different things to look at and focus on, right? Just so many different things, right? And still, still the, the war in Russia and Ukraine is going on, right? All major events that we're hearing about, some of them less now, but they're still happening. But we're hearing about these things all the time, right? And could be anxious and, and, and have people, you know, thinking great about some things and, and, and worried about other things. And then we have the election coming up, right? And depends who you talk to. If one person gets elected, our country's ruined. And then if the other person gets elected, our country's ruined, right? Right? No matter what happens, the country's ruined for somebody, right? And, and, and there's worry and, and, and anxiousness and all these things, right? And then, you know, you could, at any given moment, you could have one of these uh, types of feelings. You could feel good. You could be like, oh, no, it's horrible, angry, right? Exasperated. We're just darn tired, right? Just darn tired. So today, in this message, I just want to remind us all that God is still on the throne. Regardless of what happens, right, in these elections, regardless of what happens, if I lose my voice or not, right, God is still on the throne, right? God is on the throne. Actually, a couple years ago, I lost my voice 
right before I was supposed to preach. I couldn't talk. I literally was a whisper. And I had a guest speaker. I was actually going inter- to interview a missionary that morning, but I couldn't talk. So the missionary gave the message, right? God is on the throne. He is in control, right? So today we're going to look at a couple questions. We're going to look at a couple scriptures and contemplate a couple questions for our individual lives, right? First, I want to look at Psalm 47, 7, right? It says, for God is the king of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. If the blues get elected, is God still the king of all the earth? Right? I, I don't think some people are, 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 are confident in that message. Let's try that again. If the blues get elected, is God still the king of all the earth? Yes, God is still the king of all the earth. If the reds get elected, is God still the king of all the earth? Yes, amen, right? Regardless of what happens in your life, personally, politically, natural disaster, war, issue, famine, God is the king of all the earth. So you should feel good about that. You should feel encouraged about that, right? That should bring you great joy and also bring you great peace. God is king of all the earth, right? So do our words and actions reflect someone who belongs to the king of all the earth, right? Are we people who are, you know, doomsday this and that and everything's horrible and it's going down the drain, right? Or are we folks that glorify the king, that praise the king, right? and show confidence in the king, right? Right? How many of you in situations when somebody's like, oh, everything's, everything's horrible, it's bad, it's going on, you say, I want to follow that person. I want, I want what that person has in their life, right? It's like, oh, it's horrible, it's this, you know, this happened, that happened, everything's bad, and, and this and that, and be like, man, I want to be just like that guy, right? Have you ever seen that, Tony? Never. Never, right? Our words, our action, our life, regardless of the circumstances, should reflect who is the king of all the earth. And do we belong to him or not? Because if we belong to him, we trust in him. He is our Lord and our savior, right? We can have confidence. We can have joy. We can have peace. We can have happiness in any and all circumstances. If you were praising God more in your life, how would it impact the people around you, right? How would it impact the people around you? When folks come around you, are you somebody who's complaining a lot or are you giving glory to God? Are you counting your blessings, right? I'll tell you, for me, I mentioned this story many times over my pastorate and I'll mention it again today. When my wife, Brittany, had the five-inch tumor on her heart, and we were going through that process in the medical facilities, talking with doctors and nurses, she was constantly praising God. She was constantly, she'd have, you know, like, being in medical facilities is a nasty thing. I go visit people a lot, right? And it's, it, 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 a lot of times people don't get care, and they get treated poorly. I'll tell you, doctors and nurses would stop by Brittany's room, right, just to get a pick-me-up during the day. Because she would always smile and say, thank you, God bless you, you're so fantastic. And this woman has two young kids at home, right, who she's worried about if she dies, I have to take care of these kids. Give me, right? She, and she's praising God with great joy and happiness, right? Uh, just an illustration of how your demeanor and your praise of the Lord can impact people around you, right? And then where in your life do you have to do a better job of singing a psalm of praise to God, right? Where in your life do you have to do a better job? Because all of us have those circumstances. It might be in your house, 
right? You can have the personality where when you go outside your house, you're bubbly, you're happy, and everybody likes you. But at home, you give everything outside, so at home you're miserable, right? There's people like that, right? There's people like that. It could be at work, right? You're at work and you're miserable. You're unhappy at work, so you're complaining, right? Coworkers don't want to work with you, right? There's so many different aspects. So I want to encourage each and every one of us to contemplate where in our life do we need to do a better job of praising God for what he is doing in our life, right? And it might be a really difficult time, right? We've all, anybody who's lived for a number of years have been through difficult times, right? But when Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we can always give thanks for him conquering sin and death on the cross, right? We could always sing praise and glory to God, right? For God is the king, all the earth, sing to him a psalm of praise, right? I want to encourage each and every one of us to do this because no matter what happens, God is still on the throne, amen? Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18. It says, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crops fail and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. Right? Oh, man. Right? Think about that devastation. That's like, that's barren. Right? There's absolutely nothing. Right? Uh, back here, it says there is, there's absolutely nothing, right? There's nothing going on, right? Well, but in Habakkuk, it says there's absolutely nothing. I have nothing, but guess what? Don't worry and be happy with God, right? I will praise God with absolutely nothing. Who is this convicting to? Does anybody feel convicted? I feel convicted. Oh, man, two of us? Oh, my goodness, right? Oh, my goodness. How are we when we have absolutely nothing, right? Do we feel sorry for ourselves? Do we lament and complain? Or are we praising God and giving glory to God, right? When things are not going how you want, how do you react? Are you reacting the way that God wants you to react? Are you saying the things that God wants you to say? Are you being the person that God wants you to be, right? Where are you being like everybody else who doesn't have God as their Lord and Savior, right? Do you count your blessings when things are scarce, right? No matter what happens, we have blessings to count, right? One of the greatest sins of the Israelites after they were freed from slavery in Egypt, is complaining in the desert. They were just freed from slavery. They were provided manna, right? They, were, they complained about food, so they were given manna. Then they complained about manna, so they were given quail. Then they complained about quail, right? God is blessing us all of the time. You might not be where you want to be, right? And that's okay. It's, oh, it's good to understand and recognize that you're not where you want to be, right? Or you're not where God wants you to be yet. This might be a season of in-between, right? But regardless of what happens, no matter how barren things get, how much nothingness you have in your life, right? We can praise God. We could praise God because God is good, right? Remember who God is and what he has done so you can praise him in times of famine. Make it a practice in your life to wake up each morning, pray, count your blessings, right? Be thankful for what God is doing because you will hit hard times. You, it, I know the stories of many of you here. You know, there's so many stories of adversity and challenge and sadness and heartbreak, right? And yet still, you cling to God and honor and glorify God. Right, in these times when so many things are going on, and there's so much, uh, the world is telling us uh, that this is horrible and that is horrible. Right, God is in control. Though the fig tree does not bud, 
right? Though you didn't get the raise you wanted, though there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, though you messed up, right? You're not able to buy the things you want to buy, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, you're not living where you want to live, yet you should rejoice in the Lord and be joyful in God, our Savior, right? Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior, right? When we're joyful in God, regardless of the circumstance, to bring glory to him, and others will be drawn to him because God is still on the throne no matter what is going on, right? Broken relationships, right? People don't like you. God is on the throne. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, right? What are we getting consumed with, right? So often, people get consumed with certain things, right? Right now, so many people are consumed with the elections. Yes, vote. Register to vote. Vote biblical values. Yes. Participate. Tend the gardens that God has placed you in. Right? Do not neglect the responsibilities that God has given you. Go to work, show up on time, you know, do these things. But because of God's great love, we are not consumed by anything of this world. What should we be consumed with? We should be consumed with the Lord, right? We should be consumed with doing what God wants us to do. That should be our focus. That should be our intention, right? I t- um, talk to people all the time. I say, one of the things that uh, really just helped Brittany and I recognize that we should get married is that both of our desire was to fully honor and glorify God and do whatever God wanted us to do, right? We both wanted to be consumed by the Lord. We want to be filled by God and fill our lives with things of God, right? Work is good. Work is a blessing and a resp- like a responsibility that God has entrusted to us with, right? But we shouldn't be consumed by work, right? Family is good right? But everything needs to flow from our love of God, right? His great love for us. And by that, we then go forth and do the things he calls us to do, right? Every morning, every morning, God gives us new compassions, right? Or or, or, or like refills our compassion, right? Towards us. Every morning, God is faithful and blesses us. Every day that you have breath, is a day that you should give thanks and praise to God. So what are you letting consume you? That isn't of God, right? What is, what is distracting you from God? What is making you uh, not the person that God wants you to be, right? There could be two actions that are very similar, right? But one is done with the wrong focus, right? the wrong intention, and therefore it's sin. Where the other is done for the love of God and for the glory of God, therefore it's good, right? And only you know that, right? Through the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit fills you, he will convict you and let you know when you are open to that. Don't be so prideful and arrogant to always assume, right, that what you're pursuing is what God wants you to pursue, right? Do you praise God for his renewed compassion toward you every morning, right? Talk about compassion, uh, uh, God's grace and his mercy, right? When you wake up, are you reminding yourself of these things? Or reminding of yourself of the things that God has done for you, right? You need to remember God's faithfulness and be filled with praise and joy, right? Anybody who's here today, has been through something, 
right? Has experienced God's faith, faithfulness, his joy, his compassion, right? Remind yourself of what he has brought you through regardless of what you are in. Remind yourself of what he has brought you through regardless of what you are in. Because the Lord's, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Amen. He's on the throne. Do not forget that God is on the throne. Psalm 20, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. And Psalm 44, 6 and 7 says, I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory, but you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame, right? It's so easy, right? I know many of you, you're very talented people. You have so many gifts and abilities, perseverance and toughness, right? A lot of people here in the Northeast, like we're tough people, right? We're tough people. You got to be tough to get around the Northeast, right? So easy to put our confidence in these things, right? Put our confidence in things that we've achieved in our own work, right? Our confidence should be in the Lord, right? Our trust should be in God because he gives us the gifts and abilities, right? He, he provides us with all things, all good and perfect gifts, right? So what are you trusting in instead of God? What are you putting your hope and your faith and your trust in? You know, a couple of weeks back, I mentioned a friend of mine, and maybe even a couple months ago, um, his story is that uh, he was at a company and he was there for six years and he thought he was untouchable because he developed a software that they use company wide, right? And he thought, nobody else knows how to use this. So there's no way on earth they could fire me, right? Then one day, I got called into his manager's office and he was fired, right? And when I was talking with him and he's going through this difficult time, he said, you know, I know God wants to teach me something in this time because whatever lesson he wants to teach me, I don't want to have to learn again, okay? He said, I don't want to have to learn this lesson again. So I want to, I want to understand what God's doing. He was out of work for about six months. A couple months in, uh, he serves a, a, as a leader in his church. And um, a couple months in, he told me, he said, text me. He said, hey, can you pray for me? Somebody I thought I was really good friends with actually doesn't like me at all. And he said, it's really thrown me off because, you know, I thought we were good friends and everything. And so they don't like me. So he goes and works through this. And I had breakfast with him about a week and a half ago. He said, what I learned through this situation, and I asked him, I said, what did you, he, he has a job now, praise God. He has a job where he's making about 30% more than he was making at his other place. He said, this job is perfectly formed for him. He doesn't have all the skills that's needed, but he has the space to learn and grow. And also um, uh, they, they've given him some autonomy to be able to do this. So he's actually forming things. And he says, it's like the perfect job for him. And it's challenging, right? We should like challenge. And so uh, I, I said, so what'd you learn through all of this, right? He said, I learned that I can't trust in myself. I need to trust in God. God gave me that other job. God gave me this job, right? I thought everything was perfect. I thought I was untouchable, and I wasn't. I thought that, you know, uh, uh, this, I had this relationship, and I didn't. I was trusting in myself, and my perception was wrong. So I need to trust fully in God, right? What are you trusting in instead of God? Is it yourself? Is it money? Is it other people, right? A lot of times we can trust in other people instead of trusting in God. When you have victory, who are you giving credit to, right? Who do you give credit to when things go well? Give credit to yourself. Give credit to other people. Give credit to God, right? Who are you giving praise to in times of goodness and victory? 
And finally, remember that it is God who gives us victory. It is God who gives us victory. We should not trust in horses and chariots, right? But in the name of the Lord. We should not trust in things, but in the name of the Lord, right? We should not trust in power, right? Bow, sword, right? Power or skills, but it is God who gives us victory. Amen? God is on the throne. God is on the throne. And finally, Exodus 15, 18. The Lord reigns forever and ever. No matter what happens, the Lord reigns. God is in control. Right? God is in control. Trust in him. Lean on him. Draw close to him. Remember, it is God who reigns forever. If Jesus is your Savior, you have ultimate victory. You have something to be joyful of, grateful for, and hopeful of. Okay? The day of being with him. Right? In Christ, we have eternal life. In Christ, death is conquered. Sin is conquered. So we have great joy. And no matter what happens, God is still on the throne. Amen? God is on the throne. So don't worry and be happy with God. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that regardless of what's going on, we could be joyous in you. We could be thankful for you. We give you so much thanks and praise, O oh Lord, for the good gifts you have bestowed upon us in the past, in the present, 